So here we are back at Chalk Mountain, located in Dixie Valley. The road labeled Dixie Valley is about 35 miles east of Fallon, Nevada. Turn north at the sign for Dixie Valley and proceed about four miles down a paved road. There will be a four-road intersection and turn east down a dirt road. After about a mile, take a left down another well-traveled dirt road. In about a quarter of a mile, you will see a wide spot with a large watering tank. Park somewhere in that general area. The coordinates are north 39 degrees, 19.720 by west 118 degrees, 8.432. Look straight towards Chalk Mountain and you will see mine tailings almost directly ahead. In this picture, they are off to the far left. Here, let's see a video shot. Take about 20 minutes towards the tailings. Incidentally, this mine we will actually not visit today. It is covered previously in my Chalk Mountain Dixie Valley series. When you get to the point where you need to turn into the base of the canyon to access the mine, incidentally, you won't be able to see it at this point. In other words, you are now just a bit above the valley floor. Don't turn into the obvious canyon that will lead you to the mine. You will see a much smaller and thinner canyon to your left, that's north. Head that way. Within five minutes, you will see this prospect. Pass it up. It's uninteresting. And just beyond a turn in the canyon, you will see this prospect. Head that way. About a hundred yards from the prospect, at the base of the canyon floor, you will encounter very spectacular float, all in a rich mix of iron, sulfur, magnesium, with quartz stringers. Remember, this was all precipitate leaching up through a hydrothermal vent, finding the point of least resistance as it moved upwards. So that explains the windy, marbled appearance on so many of the rocks. Also, keep in mind that the green is not copper sulfide, it is serpentine. Now, let's give you a video of the float just below the prospect. Any material with red is heavily iron laden. You'll need a ferrous discriminator to properly metal detect this material. The nice thing about Chalk Mountain Mining District was that it was known for its free gold. So be looking for micro gold as you detect this. I appreciate this district, and especially the west side of the mountain, because it has been so untouched since its mining heyday in the 1930s. Sand Mountain, depending upon where you go, is less so because of the ORV park and all of the people who leave the park on their four-wheelers and explore. In its drop, you can hear how heavy with minerals this material actually is. Here we are at the mouth of the prospect. I think the larger rocks stacked along the outer sides were probably intended to be packed out. And then here is the actual excavation. It only proceeds in about five feet, but the whole dig is in a very loose laminite serpentine material. It might be a wise move to crush the material up and look for free gold. 
The nicety is you wouldn't even need a rock crusher for this. The material is very, very loose as it is. And if you're not interested in the porthole, immediately before this is a whole series of ledges that are highly interesting. Let's give you a better sense of that with a video. Here we are climbing up to the portal. You can see how easy this stuff would be to excavate out of its crumbly head wall. Be sure, though, to bring gloves. This material is very sharp. Remember that if the laminite lies flat to the ground, as most of it does here, that is especially good. The gold will tend to sink to the lower basal level. Now here we have a foot wide inclined plane of materialized matter. The coordinates for this prospect I will leave above in the written notes. Now to end on a sad note, the teetering building we visited so often last summer in our series, well, it's collapsed.